Good evening with the Thursday edition of Sports Night. I'm Anne-Marie Burt. Now, the West City's captain, Jason Holder, says that his team has quite a lot to think about since their defeat in the first test. Acknowledging that they were totally outplayed by a much stronger team, Holder says his guys need to be more patient in the second test. Yeah, we sat down, we spoke about a number of things, you know, and we just tried to uh, detail a little bit more about what, what we're looking to do here in the second test match. Um, I think it's more of a patience thing with our bowlers, you know, having a consistent plan and, and sticking to it, you know, and mainly for our bats, but to get stuck in, you know, and, and fight it out. Um, it's not going to be easy here. Uh, we're coming up against a very good side, you know, and, you know, we're kind of relatively inexperienced, you know, but having said that, I think over these last few days, we've gotten guys to open up their minds a bit more to change and, and we, we, we're going to be tinkering with a few, few things going into the second test match. Now, after suffering a humiliated in his defeat inside three days, Holder says that it's important that his team has been bonding together tightly in an effort to bounce back. We, we rally together and stay together. I think through hard times we have to stay together, and this is probably a difficult time as a group, you know. So I think once we rally uh, as a side, you know, we try to do a lot more team bonding stuff, you know, to bring the guys closer and try not to let people disperse in groups. And I, I must say it has been, you know, a wonderful few days off. I think the guys have really come together as we would like. And I'm, look, I'm looking forward to the second test match. We've had to discuss a lot of things. We've opened up our minds to a few things, and, you know, hopefully into this second test match we'll put up a better fight. And that second test bowls off tomorrow at 6 a.m. from Leeds. Barbados Traders have called up England T20 batting star Ian Morgan for the remainder of their 2017 Hero Caribbean Premier League campaign. Morgan, England's T20 and 1 international captain, will arrive in Barbados in time for the start of the Trident's home leg, which bowls off on Tuesday with a 6 p.m. clash against the Guyana Amazon Warriors at Kensington Oval. Morgan is one of the world's leading T20 batsmen, having played 234 T20s and scored 5,062 runs. Morgan joins a squad that already includes the likes of captain and explosive batsman Kyron Pollard, along with New Zealand striker Kane Williamson and Barbadian stroke maker Dwayne Smith. Following their opening game against the Amazon Warriors, Tridents will take on St. Lucia Stars on August the 31st at 8 p.m. In the weekend doubleheader, Tridents will clash with Trimbago Knight Riders on September the 2nd at 9 p.m. before facing the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots on September 3rd at 6 p.m. Now, part of the Caribbean Premier League's program is to reach out to the community, and today the Barbados Tridents got the chance to mix and mingle with some of the island's junior cricketers. I was there at Brown's Beach for that session. It was an enviable opportunity afforded to reigning Herman Griffith cricket champions, Bailey's Primary, as they got some tips on being a cricketer while enjoying a game of beach cricket with some members of the Barbados Tridents team. Although it looked like a fun day in the sun, the young players interacted with the likes of Kane Williamson, Wayne Parnell, Tion Webster, Ryan Wiggins, Akil Hosien, and Nicholas Puran. Parnell had some good words of advice for the future cricketers. Remember why you, you know, play sport. And I think even for, for us sometimes with the uh, high pressure, uh, it's, it's all about remembering why you know, started playing sport, whether it's cricket or any, any other sport. It's, it's, most, it's firstly about having fun um, and also about making friends all, all over the world. Um, you know, four or five years ago, I, I never thought that I would meet guys from the Caribbean and you know, have, have friends and even guys from New Zealand as well. So uh, just keep having fun and, uh, and make lots of friends. Coach of the Baileys team, Ronald Grenay, said it was a fantastic opportunity for his boys. They are very, very happy to be here, to meet you guys, rub shoulders with you guys, and understand what it means to be a professional cricketer. We are always telling them about these opportunities, and I'm grateful to GTSL for giving us this opportunity, and also for giving the boys this opportunity. We really look forward to interacting with you this afternoon. The Trident's team is soaking in as much as they can of the island before taking to the field on Tuesday for their first game at Kensington in this leg of the CPL. Darren Bravo and Brendan McCullum smashed eight sixes off the final 13 balls in a rain-reduced chase to leave host St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots shell-shocked as the Trinbago Knight Riders escaped with a dramatic eight-wicket win by the Duckworth Lewis Stern method. Playing at Warner Park last night, the Patriots batted first and were 60 for one in the sixth over when the lights went out for 90 minutes. When the lights eventually came back on, the innings was reduced to 17.5 overs aside, where the Patriots then advanced 86 for one before the rains came, causing another 45 minute interval. 
On resumption, with only five overs left in the innings, Patriots went on to nearly double their score, scoring 162 for three in 13 overs, which ended up as the sixth highest first innings total of the tournament and the highest scoring rate of any innings in CPL 2017. Chris Gale led the way with 93 from 47, while Evan Lewis made 39 from 14. Now let's take a look at that innings. Up and away. Hey, hey, on a wicked Wednesday here at Warner. Here's another maximum. And into the thick of things already. Here on maximum number one, courtesy of Lewis. Holy shit. That should be 12. That is out of here. Get here early. Oh, yeah. Guys, he chopped it on. Caught behind, in fact. Big, big edge, certainly. I thought for a moment I heard the death rattle. That has been carved down to third man for four. It's gone big. That is a huge hero maximum. Onto the roof of that stand. I pray the one five four. First of all, the overs have been reduced by two. Secondly, that's gone as well. Gone for six, and it's fifty for Chris Gale. Tremendous power from uh, the captain of the Patriots. It's a hero maximum. Oh my. He is brutal. Chris Gale has just gotten better and better in this tournament. And he takes his uh, Dwayne Bravo's head off. An incredibly powerful blow again. Picked up and picked up so well. It's a hero maximum. That's one rifle straight. Hero maximum from Chris Gale. Boom! It's big, it's big. How big? Has he got enough distance on it? No, he doesn't. Now, in reply, the game was then reduced to six overs due to rain, with the Knight Riders needing just 86 to win. McCullum and Bravo then led the Knight Riders over the line, scoring 40 from 18 and 38 from 10, respectively, for the Knight Riders to win by eight wickets, as they scored 88 for two in 5.2 overs. The win increased the Knight Riders for a space advantage over Patriots to three points, and a win in either of their final two matches will clinch them a top spot in the league stages. A hat trick from Alexandra Bowler Malik Young was the highlight of the opening day of the BCA under 15 semi final game at the Desmond Haynes Oval. Alexandra batted first and they were dismissed for exactly 80. Nichols Bacon Combermere then made 106 all out in their innings, with Young taking 3 for 11. At Bank Hall, the Milo Lodge team made 129, to which Dee's Mega Styles Foundation replied with 152 for 9, with Jakeem Ford top scoring with 52. The former West Indies skipper Darren Sammy and former number one bowler Samuel Badri are the only two West Indians included in the World 11 team to take on Pakistan in Lahore next month. The Faf Du Plessis led side will also include fellow South Africans Hashim Amla, Imran Tahir, Moin Markel, and David Miller. Australia will provide three players in George Bailey, Ben Cutting, and the wicketkeeper Tim Payne. There's one player each from England, Bangladesh, New Zealand, and Sri Lanka. The 3T20 series, which has international status, begins on September the 12th, with the next two T20s to be played on September 13th and the 15th. Now we'll take a short break here, but coming up, the latest from the Senior Knockout Volleyball. As you enjoy the exchange of culture for Carry Fest at 13, remember these tips to keep the environment clean and green. Utilize local suppliers for your needs for the production and display of your products or services. Choose local foods for consumption and production. Buy locally manufactured products. Donate to offset your carbon footprint. Barbados. 
August 17th to 27th. Visit carefesta.net. In the next 60 minutes. How did 271 pieces by Pablo Picasso, worth close to $100 million, end up in his handyman's garage for 40 years? So the explanations were a bit murky, but I quickly understood that they must have stolen them. The story of the missing Picassos and the only two characters, and we mean characters, who know the truth. 60 Minutes, Sundays at 10.05 p.m. on CBC TV8. Welcome to Carry Festa 13. As an Amero-Caribbean affiliate at the Barbados Lightning Power Company, we strive to live and work injury-free, and we want to encourage you to do the very same. Here are a few tips from us. Always park your car in a designated parking area where there's security lighting, especially when traveling alone. Never go back to your car in a desolate area without a friend or security personnel to ensure your personal safety. From everyone at the Barbados Lightning Power Company, have a safe, enjoyable, and incident-free Carry Festa. Carry Festa 13 Barbados. And welcome back to Sports Now. There were victories for UW Blackbirds and Burger King Clapham Toners when the Goddard's Enterprises Limited Senior Volleyball Knockouts continued last night and playing at the Kensington Bond. Toners got over Phoenix Security Services Carlton in a five-set thriller while the Blackbirds had an easy night over Frozen Minis Club United in three sets. We get started with Carlton in the red versus Clapham Toners and we begin in the third set with both teams tied at a set apiece as Aaliyah Jurant comes good with the ace. Carlton responded immediately as Rhea Bryant gets up and forces the point. Carlton on the attack once again, and Brent showed her dominance again, splitting the court for another point. Meanwhile, Durant on the other side of the court wasn't going to allow Carlton to be in control as she gets down the spike from the back court. Turners then produce the goods from the left flank as Janine Ford drops it in the vacant space, take the set 25 12. With Carlton one set down now, they had a lot of work to do, and they made early movements as a Tamira Stephen gets the point for her team. Trisana Gordon then brings some trickery with the quick spike off the set, giving Carlton the upper hand. Toners still in the fight were looking to close out the game as they brought a powerful spike from the left, which gave problems in the back court. Ashley Jordan then inflicts the ace as Toners were on the verge of victory. However, Carlton dug deep in the tank to claw their way back, taking the set 26-24. So onto the deciding set and Toners showed early initiative as Akila Phillips rises off the short set and comes down with the point. Toners apparently fell asleep on the next play as Rihanna James gets the ace off the service. Phillips was a shining star for the Toners in this deciding set as she showed dominance with the spike. Stewart then showed her power from the flank as Toners took the final set and the game 15-13. On to the second game where UWI Blackbirds took on Club United closest to the screen and it would be UWI starting on the front foot through Afi Taylor. Tanine Chapman Goodwin then follows that up with a deceptive serve that brings her an ace. UWI grabbed the bull by the horns early taking the first set 25-11. In the second set, Club United turned up and started playing volleyball as they brought out the rejection to deny UWI the point. But UWI, however, strong as ever, replied instantly as Danilo Hamilton maneuvers the ball away from the block. Sharon Buffel then comes good from the backcourt for UWI to take the second set 25-15. In the third set, Club United were determined to salvage some pride and they showed heart as Jones got up and slammed the ball in Yui's face. UWI were in full control but got complacent at times which caused mistakes. But when they got it right, it was as sweet as ever as Hamilton gets the dink down the line. Hamilton then brought the power as UWI took the final set 
30 to 28 to win the game in straight sets. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Meanwhile, up at Albury in the men's category, Foundation United got over All-Stars in straight sets at 25-17, 26-24, 25-17. While in the second game of the night, Deacons handed Comer their first defeat of the competition, winning at 25-18, 25-21, 21-25, 25-21. Now it's getting into the final stages of the BABA Summer Jam Under-19 basketball competition and registering the latest wins were LSC and the Pinelands teams. Full team benches on either side, so expect a good game as Lakers play the Wildcats. Lakers with possession of the ball, and I will say, as demonstrated here, the passing was strong. And with the final say was Tariq Ennis, nicely done. The young LSC team did have much of the early possession and were racking up the points. That's Keenan Small. But Wildcats were not going to make it that easy of a game, and leading their charge was Devron Knight. Wildcats again setting up the play. This time, Alec Green comes through for the basket. But Lakers were not easing up as it was all hands on deck. Every player assisting with getting those required baskets. This play was from post to post. David Walks taking it all the way. Wildcats trying to keep it as close as possible. This one nicely rolled off the fingers of Joshua King with a little assistance from the board. LSC was on fire though, a big one thanks to Innes. As LSC led by a team high 22 from Walks, beat the Wildcats at 78 to 52. The night's nice other game was a lopsided affair as homeboys Piners made a mess of neighbors Clapham B team. To put it into perspective, by halftime Piners held a 37 to 7 lead. Clapham got the baskets far and in between, but kudos to them for that fighting spirit. That's Tito Bailey. But Pinelands, they were unstoppable and from time to time came up big. That's Carl Thorpe. How about one of the all-star plays of the game? Rashid Maynard saves the ball going out of court and blind passes behind his back to Rashad Hall, who finishes big. As Pinelands wrapped up the game with a massive 101 to 26 victory. In badminton, national doubles champions Zakiel Thorpe and Corey Fanas are into the semi-finals of the Caribaco International Tournament being played in Trinidad and Tobago. Thorpe and Fanas defeated the number two seeded pair of William Cambrera and Nelson Javier of Dominican Republic at 21-16, 14-21, 21-18 to win a place in the semi-finals. The Bajans will now take on Philip Chu and Ryan Chu for a spot in the final. In the women's doubles, Moniata Rivera and Tamisha Williams had a much easier path to the semis when their opponents failed to show and the match was a walk over. Now time for a break but we'll be back with just a lot more sports in a moment. The 34 year old who has four Olympic titles will concentrate now on road races. Now, in tonight's extra time, the West Indies head coach Stuart Law admits that the current series of England is a mismatch, but he remains keen for them to recover from a disastrous opening test. The Windies have the opportunity to turn, turn things around when the second match in the three-test series gets underway at Headingley tomorrow when the game reverts to a more traditional start. Despite the West Indies fast bowling, Curly Ambrose labeling the, the West Indies performance as totally embarrassing, Law is hopeful they can greatly improve in Leeds. Uh, we're you know, understanding that there's a lot of people out there who are disappointed in our performance, but I can tell you right now there's no, no one more disappointed than the dressing room themselves. So, um, you know, we had a good long chat after the game. Um, you know, we had a session up in Birmingham as well, which I think you know, just, you know, Highlighted the fact that we, you know, we we are fair dinkum about turning this around, and you know we came here, um, you know, full of you know, expectations again. Our preparation's been good. Um, you dissect the game, you look at it. We we had to bat against two pr pretty decent bowlers uh, in favourable conditions, uh, under lights and overcast conditions. So taking that in, um, you know, we understand we've got to be better, and we're, we're aiming to do that. Yeah, boys, boys know it's an attitude change. Um, you know, they. they they need to, you know, want to stand up and fight, and you know they have all spoken about that. So uh, look, there's there's no, been no negative talk in our dressing room. Um, you know, we're trying to highlight, you know, what we what we have done well since we've arrived, uh, and what we need to do better. So um, you know, it's all it's all very positive talk in our room, and you know the criticism will come whether we win, lose, or draw. So um, 
yeah, we're, we're pretty accustomed to that, so um, we just got to get on and fight out. So, like we just said it before, I, I support these guys, you know, 100%. I believe these guys have got the talent. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, we need, you know, we need them to understand that it's difficult. We need people out there to understand it's difficult. It's, these young kids are learning in the toughest, you know, cricket arena in the world. Uh, international cricket is pretty tough. Um, and in this part of the world, when you're playing against an experienced England side, it's even tougher. Australia came here a couple of years ago, got bowled out for 65. So too bad. Now here are some of the events happening tomorrow, August the 25th. In cricket, the West Indies will be taking on Leeds, will be going to Leeds, that is, to take on England in the second test match beginning at 6 a.m. Barbados time. In the CPL, the defending champions Jamaica Talibas will be taking on the St. Lucia Stars at home from 6 p.m. Now that's tonight's edition of Sports Night. I'm Anne-Marie Burr. You can join us again tomorrow for more sports. Good evening. You're watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados.